Hi there and welcome back. So we are in the middle of the nervous system and we have been looking at the anatomy of the nervous system. Let's move on to the disorders and the diseases. So God has created a, such a beautiful body that our brain is taken care by the skull that we have outside, right? Uh, then we have our meninges, the pad or the three layers to protect the brain and of course uh, there is a cerebrospinal fluid that also protects and surrounds the brain as well as the spinal cord. So, and additionally speaking, if you recall when we were looking at the different cells, we did review the neuroglial or the glial cells uh, that basically forms uh, the blood brain barrier to prevent uh, harmful substances to uh, damage the, the brain by getting uh, un wrongful access. So, but however things may go wrong and if so then what happens? So first we will take a look at the broader overview or the classification of the neurological disorders. So you could have a congenital disorder, a de degenerative moment, moment or and seizure disorders, infectious, neoplastic, traumatic and vascular and we will get into each of these categories. So let's start with the first congenital disorders. So in congenital disorders, we will first look at the hydrocephalus. So hydrocephalus is where there is accumulation of cerebrospinal fluid in the brain. Okay? If the circulation of this fluid in the brain or the spinal cord is impaired, then there is accumulation and that accumulation can lead to the pressure in the ventricles that we reviewed before that you know in the brain, ventricles of the brain and normally one would notice that this is something that is more typical and frequently happens amongst the infants. So we will see infants with enlarged head and a small face and more than likely the final diagnosis is hydrocephalus. So to relieve the pressure from the brain, a catheter is placed from the ventricle of the brain to the venous blood in the chest or heart so that the fluid is continually drained from the brain. Hydrocephalus can also occur, although this is congenital, but just to make a point that this disease can also occur in an adult as a result of tumor or infractions. Okay. So, what can be the signs and symptoms of this disease? So, you could have vomiting, seizures, eyes that appear to gaze downwards, so on and so forth, loss of bladder control, muscle plasticity spasm, you name it. Congenital hydrocephalus is attributed to environmental factors um, because it is congenital so um, by birth some genetic factors and there are um, known causes of some cyst and stenosis that could also lead to this disease. Normal brain and brain with hydrocephalus, so you will see that ventricles are filled with extra fluid. Uh, this is normal and this is enlarged head. Now that slide was from outside, if we go in, this is what we will see how it looks in healthy versus the one who has this disease. Now another way to look at this disease is depending upon whether it is obstructive, communicating uh, due to the pressure or due to some other conditions. So there is obstruction that we understand. 
communicating hydrocephalus there is no block in the flow but the fluid is not absorbed properly back into the bloodstream so that is communicating related to pressure so it can occur in older age groups and is due to the lack of properly functioning brain structures and secondary is due to something else generally the inflammation or infection or head injury so this basically we are talking about congenital so what could be the causes for the children however having said that it can happen in the adults and those are the possible causes so one can also say that another way to look at why this is happening because of the increased production or because of decreased absorption or because something is obstructing and hence there is extra fluid in the ventricles now of course medical management can be done and there are some data out here because we are talking about congenital so that dominates the percentage of causes of hydrocephalus but there are some other unknown or acquired or the secondary reasons why one may get this disease okay remember in the beginning we were talking about the catheter being used to drain the fluid and that is what this is okay so enough on this disease there are many other diseases and disorders as it relates to the brain or the central nervous system or the peripheral nervous systems we took the overview of those diseases we'll get into one one by one all those details see you soon take care bye bye